China Turbo versus USA Turbo. That's what we're gonna be comparing today. This is my new turbo on this car. This is a Bullseye uh, 76 mil, and it's got a 132 compressor housing on it, 96 by 88 turbine wheel. Essentially, the turbine, uh, the turbo that we'll be comparing it to uh, that I had last year was an S480. It's an offshore turbo. It's made by Performance World, and it was a very reasonable price. There was nothing wrong with the price point. It lasted. There's no issues with that. But um, something that I didn't really understand before I started trying to get into class racing and paying more attention to it is the turbo options. So you can get turbos that are super cheap, and you can get turbos that are super expensive. And you know, I really thought this year I'm going in with a 76 mil versus an 80 mil that we ran last year. So last year we had an S480. Um, so we're taking essentially the same turbo, we're making the inlet um, and obviously the compressor wheel four millimeters smaller. And I thought that uh, if this turbo could make as much power as the old one, I'd be doing good. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys the results of that and how that all went down. Uh, one other thing, I guess, uh, maybe two other things that have changed this year on this setup versus last year, the intake is different now. Um, I know that this intake will produce better all around power, but peak horsepower difference versus the one I had last year, there really shouldn't be a difference. Um, also this year, the car is 9.7 to one compression with the forged internals I put in it. And last year we were at uh, 10.7 to one. So before anyone says anything about timing, I will let you know that um, the car ran out of, uh, it was having some crank trigger issues on this turbo. so. I didn't even get into adding a whole bunch of timing and really trying to make power. Uh, so yeah, maybe I will just go through the old setup. I'll show you guys some old videos, some old data logs, and I'll show you the new dyno videos and the new data logs. And I think that you will be as impressed as I am about the difference in turbo, because like I say, we're at a disadvantage here. We have lower compression. We have a smaller turbo. Uh, and actually the camshaft that's in this car um, is meant kind of to deal with back pressure. It's a weird spec camshaft. So it's not even in the range. Um, basically how the car was ran in this video, we never got into any back pressure issues. So that was never even able to shine. So really um, we're doing essentially an apples to apples comparison of uh, super high quality made in USA bullseye turbo versus typical billet wheel China S480, um, which don't get me wrong, by no means was that a bad turbo. Um, but the idea here is really what's the difference because I think a lot of people have this question and I don't really know if it's if it's ever shown um, this clearly, you know, just on the dyno. Same car, same engine, same fuel. <laughs> We're actually lower compression now, which is gonna kill the horsepower. I should really probably be close to 11 to one like I was last year, um, but let's get into it here. Now, one other thing I will note about Bullseye uh, something that's really cool is their turnaround times are absolutely ludicrously fast. So if you order a turbo from them, you're pretty much going to get it shipped in two days, maybe three days, maybe four days, but that's probably about it. Um, you can order a 24 hour express service with them as well uh, for a little bit of an extra fee. So these are really good for someone who's racing um, because we see it happen all the time with, uh, you know, with class legal turbos. If you have an issue, it's a fairly specialty thing. You can't just send it to anyone. It has to go back to the manufacturer. And if the manufacturer is super stacked up and busy, it's just gonna take it's just gonna take time to get it back, right? Everybody who's racing these cars has a lot of money into them. It's all high priority. So the cool thing about Bullseye is you can get really fast upgrades and get really fast repairs. And when you order your turbo, they will machine it for you and get it together very fast. So that's another big bonus and just something that you're not really gonna get with uh, certain other turbo uh, manufacturers or you know your your typical off-the-shelf China turbo if, if you have an issue with it you you might be able to find someone to fix it but it's just not the same level as easiness as this so this is really dedicated to um, the racers out there and uh, yeah so I'll stop babbling and let's go through some data
All right, guys, so you can take a look at this log here. This was 717 wheel. Uh, we start off at our boost. You see we made a peak of about 17.7 pounds down near the kind of early on in the pull around 6,300 RPM. And we ran the car out to 70, just about 7,200 there when I let off. Uh, 16 pounds to boost all in the fuel flow here is a little bit skewed right at where I let off but you know you can call it about 721 pounds an hour 14 degrees of timing and uh, that's about all she wrote so pretty solid numbers the torque was quite low on this one as you may have noticed all right so one more pull on the old uh, turbo here this was actually from my personal best so this turbo went 950s which is amazing for um, a really reasonably priced turbo on a completely stock ls uh, stock bottom end car was 3450 pounds so as we take a look at the log you'll see we're going through here uh, 20 pounds of boost low out um, up near the shift points, uh, 17 pounds ish, and we're ranging here. We're around mid 700s for fuel flow. See, due to my boost control, uh, we were kind of falling off at the end, so we only went across the traps at 14 pounds. So, if I had better boost control here, I feel like I probably could have squeezed like a 920 out of this turbo, which for the price is uh, extremely good. Um, I really did have a lot of fun with the old turbo, so I'm not trying to bash any offshore turbos here. It was good. I'm just trying to show you guys um, what's that difference look like. So you see back last year, this pass, uh, that's boost, whereas our fuel flow is red. So that guy. Peak fuel flow on this pass was around 750 pounds, which is very good. You see we varied our boost levels. Um, so let's try the new turbo and uh, we'll see the difference. All right, so uh, this was when we were just getting the bullseye stuff kind of dialed in. So this was 795 horsepower and 868 pound-feet of torque. So uh, you take a look at the boost. It's not quite the same, 18.7 uh, PSI. So around 18 pounds, we see things slowly tapering off here. Um, have a look at the fuel flow here. You're seeing... 800s 900s i mean the peak here it's saying it's almost a thousand but that's skewed where i let off but i mean you can just take a look at this one cell or you know these particular spots we're, we're 17 pounds of boost essentially all in on this guy just like our last run um and we're commanding so much more fuel flow 900 pounds an hour of fuel so uh, these two passes are about the closest I have between last year and this year, um, but that is a substantial difference between the two. Uh, you can see our timing is uh, even more conservative this year at only 12 and a half degrees all in here. So this is when the fun was just starting. All right, this is our 963 wheel horsepower pull. So we turn things up a little bit. Uh, you have a look at the boost here. We just cleaned up fueling. We got up to a peak of 19.1 uh, pounds up here. Finished the run off uh, close to 19 pounds. So we're essentially two pounds over um, what our you know pulls were last year. You see the fuel this thing is commanding is just getting crazy, 1,050 pounds per hour. Uh, we're only in 13 degrees of timing. One cool thing, quality turbo like this, watch the intake air temps change. They start at 80 degrees and they end at 84, which is unreal. And making this kind of power on 13 degrees of timing, you're very safe. So uh, I'll show you guys how we finish this one off.
All right, guys. So there it is, 1,006 wheel horsepower. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to Bill and the team at Bullseye Power Turbo Chargers. Customer service from them has been absolutely top notch. I appreciate all the help. Uh, and clearly, very clearly, these guys know what they're doing. I mean, a thousand wheel out of a 76 mil uh, on a stock 243 head LS untouched head is pretty amazing. Uh, I also have to thank, while I'm at it, um, my buddy Bobby for tuning the car, as well as Everett. Uh, those two guys really help. Uh, I should say they help. I mean, they pretty much do everything. Like, I'm a hack on the computer, they're not, so I trust them. Uh, and also, uh, JS Speed Shop for letting us use the dyno. Super nice facility. I'm very thankful for that. And we learned so much from Jay during this process as well. Um, and... You know, uh, at this point, I think uh, it's very clear to say the quality turbocharger makes a huge difference. So let's just run you through the log quick. So boost-wise, we made 19.9 pounds all in at the end of the run. You know, we were pretty close between 19 and 20 pounds. Uh, we only had 12 PSI of dome pressure, which in my opinion uh, indicates that we have a lot more to go here. Um, the drive pressure, it looks like uh, just due to low dome pressure, I don't think we have an extremely high amount of back pressure, but obviously you don't really know until you see an actual back pressure sensor, but I feel fairly confident that we could probably get this up to 25 pounds. Uh, we are only 13 degrees of timing all in here. The manifold uh, air temps here, the intake air temps, you can see it almost looks like it's broken. It's not doing anything. Uh, we went from like 82 degrees to maybe 87 degrees over here, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and so why didn't we go for more power? Well, I was running into crank trigger issues, unfortunately. So um, the super smart people I've spoke to tell me it's probably time for an external tra uh, crank trigger. And I trust them on that. I am going to try um, an NTK crank sensor first and see if that helps, but... Uh, essentially what the issue probably is, is the 58X reluctor wheel combined with engine RPMs and combined with the acceleration and twisting of the crankshaft and possible deflection uh, in the reluctor wheel, as well as, uh, I'm told, the difficulty to ignite the fuel and how that can induce possible noise into the signal for the crank sensor. So to make a long story short, we started losing crank sync after here. Um, but if we ever get that sorted, if I ever need to get that sorted, uh, then I will definitely be back trying to make more power. I think we may be pretty close to the limit of this block. It's a 30 over aluminum block. So it's a 4.030 bore. Uh, again, it's probably near the limit of the cage with this power level. I'm not an expert on it, but I, I feel like it's getting close. So in conclusion, guys, thanks for checking out the channel. I appreciate your support. Um, again, Bill, Bullseye Team, thanks again for all your help. I am thoroughly impressed, and I think most of the people who watch this video will be thoroughly impressed to see a little 76 mil go out and put down a thousand wheel on a stock head LS with more to go. So. As always, guys, thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you learned as much as I did on this one, and we will see you on the next one.